Hello my dear students of grade 8. Today I am going to start the first lesson of your science textbook. That is importance of microorganisms. You have learnt about different organisms. You know how to classify organisms. Microorganisms and macroorganisms. Under macroorganisms you have discussed about plants and animals. So, if we take the term microorganisms, what do you think they are? What is the meaning of the word micro? Something very, very tiny, a minute thing. And what is an organism? A living being. So, very minute living organisms are what we call as microorganisms. Now, these microorganisms are there around us, but most of the time we can't see them. But there are instances where we can see the microorganisms. So, very minute living organisms that are visible or not visible to our naked eye are known as microorganisms. We will see how. So, here we are going to discuss the importance of microorganisms. So, to do that, we will have to discuss this lesson under three different topics. Now, I will move on to that. Under importance of microorganisms, first we are going to discuss what microorganisms are. You need to understand what they are and the different types. Then we will look at the effects of microorganisms on food. I am sure you would have experienced this at least once. How microorganisms affect food. Whether they affect it in a good way or a harmful way. And finally, the impact of microorganisms on humans and their activities. So when we say impact, it can be beneficial effects or it can be harmful effects. So, all that will be discussed under this lesson. With that, I will move on to the lesson. Microorganisms. So, as I told you, very minute microorganisms. The unicellular, single cell or multicellular organisms which cannot be observed clearly by naked eye are called microorganisms. Now, in this you have to remember or you have to understand certain terms very carefully. So, here the term unicellular. So, if it is an organism like this, just one cell or it can be multicellular where many cells are connected together. It can be in any different shape. So, unicellular or it can be multicellular and which cannot be observed clearly by naked eye. What is the meaning of naked eye? Either you just look at it with your own eyes or even if you are wearing spectacles like me, that is also considered as naked eye. So, as I am talking to you, there is air around you. You might be touching the table. You have your books on it. All these can have microorganisms. But we can't see them. So, that is what we mean by cannot be clearly observed by naked eye. So, then how can we observe them? We can observe them using a microscope. These microorganisms can be observed clearly through microscopes. I am sure you know what microscopes are. And you know there are two main types of microscope which use light. When they use light, we call it the light microscope. And there are there is the simple microscope or the hand lens that we use. Can we use that to observe microorganisms? No. 
because you can use the hand lens to look at your textbook if there are tiny letters it will look larger if it's a tiny insect you can look at it it will look larger maybe the shape of the wing can be observed more clearly but the microorganisms are not visible through simple microscope or hand lens we have to use a compound microscope compound microscope now when we say compound microscope you have used this before in your previous grade why do we call it a compound microscope there are two lenses the eyepiece and the objective and because of that the magnifying power of a compound microscope is high so then you can observe all these micros organisms clearly so here the magnifying power is high that is the reason we need a microscope to observe the microorganism so with that we will look at this activity observe the invisible living organisms so here we use the term invisible when you just look at something you can't see it now as i told you in air if there are microorganisms we can't see them but if we use a microscope we will be able to identify them so to do this activity we need these materials the first one is coconut water then we need a glass slide cover slip and we need the light microscope so this is what we are going to do we take a clean beaker take a small amount of coconut water into it and we leave it aside for 3 days after 3 days we take a drop of this coconut water put it on a clean glass slide then we cover it with a cover slip you all know how to use the glass slide and the cover slip you have to hold the glass slide from the sides and also when you are placing the cover slip you have to make sure that there are no air bubbles trapped inside so to do that we hold the cover slip slantly and place it on top of the drop of coconut water and then we place it on the stage of the light microscope what is the power that you have to use first you have to use the low power so always we start with the low power and for this activity we will only be using the low power of the microscope so that is the activity we will look at the method again put the coconut water into a clean container and keep it for 3 days so here we say 3 days and here we use the word clean container why is that if there were some contaminants or some microorganisms already there are in the container then we don't know whether it grew on coconut water or whether it was there so we have to make sure we take a clean beaker then put a drop of coconut water onto the glass slide and cover it with a cover slip observe the prepared slide through the light microscope under low power so as i told you we will use only the low power here present your observations through diagrams so once you look at the sample or the specimen that is the drop of water on the glass slide you can identify things there you have to draw it in your writing book 
So I'm sure you know what to do now. You have understood the activity. Let us do this activity in the lab. Okay, students. So now we are going to do this activity to observe the invisible organisms, what we call as microorganisms. So for that, I have a, a king coconut water that had been kept aside for few days. So from that, what I'm going to do is I have a clean glass slide here and a cover slip and you are familiar with the light microscope. So what I will do is I will take a drop of the coconut water, put it onto the glass slide and then cover it with a clean cover slip. You know how to use the cover slip. You have to hold it slant like this and place it on top so that you get it covered properly. The sample is covered properly. And then we have to make sure there is enough light. So here there is a light source also. Then we place the sample on the stage. And I have to adjust it so that the sample is in line with the light falling on it. Thereafter, under low power, we are going to observe the presence of microorganisms. So now if I observe it under low power, there you can see the microorganisms clearly. Can you all see the circle-like shaped cells? Those are the invisible organism, what we call as the yeast. You can see it clearly, students. So that is how microorganism that is yeast present in coconut water is visible to you through the light microscope when we observe it under low power. Okay students, did you clearly see what was there in the coconut water? Yes, you were able to observe the microorganism present. And what did we call it? Yeast and it is a type of fungus. So if we look at the observation, this is how you would have seen the drop of coconut water through the microscope under low power. You would have been able to observe these circular shaped cells, one cell. So it was a unicellular microorganism. So that was the observation. Unicellular organisms were visible through the light microscope. But did you see it with your naked eye in coconut water? No. So what did we say microorganisms were? Very minute organisms that are not visible to the naked eye clearly but they can be observed through microscopes. So from that and from this observation, we can conclude that what you saw, we called it yeast. So these were yeast and they are a type of fungus. Now we will discuss the different types of microorganisms. One type is fungus. When you say one fungus, if there are many, we call it fungi. Different types of fungus are known as fungi. So here, from all this information, we can conclude and say yeast was not visible to the naked eye, but it was visible through the microscope. Therefore, it is a microorganism. That is the conclusion of this activity. Yeast, that is a fungus, 
was not visible to the naked eye but it was observed clearly under low power of the light microscope so from that we can say yeast which is a fungus is a microorganism so therefore yeast is a micro organism so now you have an idea as to what microorganisms are now we will discuss some more details about microorganisms as where they live and how they feed or what shape they are and the different types of microorganisms to do that if i conclude the observation again it is obvious that the unicellular fungal variety unicellular fungal variety called yeast can be observed mainly in the above sample this organism is not visible to the naked eye in isolation this is important when they are present individually you can't see them with your naked eye but if you have a very large number of yeast present together then you can see it so in isolation they are not visible to the naked eye but it can be observed through a microscope therefore yeast is a micro organism so that is again the conclusion now how did this micro organism come into coconut water maybe when we broke the coconut itself the fungus could have entered the coconut water but when we kept it for 3 days the coconut water was exposed to air so the micro organisms that are present in air start growing in this particular coconut water you know what coconut water is it is a type of food so that again acts as a food to the microorganism yeast so because of that yeast grew on inside coconut water so when we took a drop from the sample we were able to observe the yeast present there so with that i will move on to the next one microorganisms are found in every habitat on earth so this is something that you have to understand now when we say microorganisms they are very tiny so they don't need a large space to live in and also they are capable of living in many different or basically all different types of environment so where they live is known as habitat for that matter the living area or the living environment of an organism is known as the habitat so here they are found in every habitat that's very important so if we write down the habitats they are present in air i told you the atmosphere or the air so here we can say they are present in air or we can say atmosphere C 
similarly we saw that there were organisms microorganisms in coconut water so they can be present in any type of water so it is present in water so air water it is also there in soil that is another place where you get microorganisms so these are the normal habitats even the other organisms live in the atmosphere water and soil in addition to this microorganisms live in and on the other organisms now take a person it can get into our body that is why we get certain diseases or else it can live on the surface of our body outside the body similarly in plants inside and outside the plant and in animals also within the animal and outside the animal so the next type of habitat is in and on a living organism under that we can say plants animals and in man so it can be inside the organism or on the surface of the organism now these are very common living organisms now can we live in a very hot water spring or an icy glacier under the sea no but these microorganisms can live in any of those environments so those are extreme environments so they can live in extreme environment as well so microorganisms can live in extreme environment so for that if we take examples glaciers you know what glaciers are ice very large mountain like ice or very large ice cubes in the polar regions so glaciers where there is very low temperature then they can live in desert now what type an environment is a desert a very dry very warm or it can be very cool also and it's just soil so that is again another extreme environment then they can live in hot springs so when we say hot springs it's very very high temperature so either very low temperature very high temperature very dry conditions and they can live in deep sea so that is under very deep sea very high depth so these are all different extreme environment condition so students you can see microorganisms are found in every habitat on earth air water soil those are the common habitats then they live in in and on a living organism all plants animals and man and also they live in extreme environments now we can call these extreme environments as hostile environment also why hostile because they are extreme so students when we consider the extreme environments or the hostile environments i told you all glaciers deserts hot springs deep sea and also there is one more environment where there is lot of salt high amount of salt in water that is known as saline environment so here saline environment
saline environment means there is lot of salt in water, salty water. So that is also an extreme condition. So these are the different habitats. So basically every habitat on earth where microorganisms live. With that I will move on to the next. Diversity. There is a tremendous biological diversity among microorganisms. Now biological diversity. What is the meaning of biological? A study related to living organisms. So if you study about a plant, animal or a microorganism, everything comes under biology. So here we say biological diversity. That means there are many different types of microorganisms. Why they are different? One thing, their type itself is different. I told you all about a fungus. So that is a certain type of microorganism. But if you take the different types of fungus, they vary in many aspects. They are cell, whether they are unicellular or multicellular. Then if it's a unicellular organism, the shape of the cell, what they feed on, their mode of nutrition, all this is different. So here, they differ in their morphological characteristics as well as in their physiological mechanisms. So we say biologically diverse, many different types. Why? They are different in morphological characteristics, their appearance and physiology is what I said as how their cell is or what they are made up of and how they get their nutrition. All these gives rise to diversity. So under these microorganisms, we will be looking at five different types of microorganisms. We are not going to go into detail. I am going to introduce all those different types to you. So the first type is going to be bacteria. Bacteria. Then we have already discussed fungus. You know the name. So bacteria is a certain type of microorganism. Fungus is another type. Now for fungus, we already saw one example, yeast. Then there is this microorganism which is known as the protozoa. So protozoan is another type of microorganism. For this, we will be discussing two examples, amoeba and paramecia. Amoeba and paramecia. So bacteria is one type, another type is fungus, then we have the protozoan. Then there is the algae. Now as an example for algae, we will be looking at Chlamydomonas. Chlamydomonas. And finally, there is another type of microorganism, which is the virus. But this is a special type of microorganism. I will tell you all why in a little while. So now you all need to know the different types. Bacteria, fungus, protozoan, algae and virus. Now we said they show biological diversity. Why is this diverse or why are they diverse? Now, if we take a bacteria, you will see they can have a shape like this or they can have a shape like this. Say something like a coil like thing. So, different shapes. Now, already you saw yeast that was also somewhat circular in shape. 
then they are can be another organism say like the shape of a novel shape so like this irregular shape their shapes can vary so there is an organism that has an irregular shape so they vary in their morphological characteristics then they differ in their other nutritional methods they can either synthesize their own food now if we take algae chlamydomonas we will observe it in a little while you will see they are green in color like green plants because these are green in color they can produce their own food so they can be autotrophic others like say fungus virus protozoa these don't produce or synthesize their own food so how do they get their nutrition by feeding on other organisms or getting nutrition from other organisms so what do we call them they are known as heterotrophic organisms so that is why they are very very diverse so here another reason they can be autotrophic or heterotrophic organisms so that is one is shape the structure and the mode of nutrition so with that i will move on to the next one you can observe some permanent slides of microorganisms in your laboratory so this is what i told you that i will show you all some of these organisms so before looking at the slides we have permanent slides that has been already prepared and it can be kept for a long period of time unlike the slide that we made before you all are familiar with that that was a temporary slide we took a clean slide we put a drop of coconut water we observed it then we wash it off and so keep the clean glass slide and the cover slip separately but there are permanent slides that are already prepared for us and that is there for a long period of time so we use the permanent slides of microorganisms from the lab to observe these so as you look at the microorganism you should be able to identify them so to do that first i will explain what these organisms are so you should look for those characteristics when we look at the slide so the first one here is a bacteria a bacteria so here you can see i told you all like this rod like or rectangle like shape now if you look at this we have already seen this before what is this it is the yeast what is an yeast it is a type of fungus then we have here now this i told you all is green in color so what does it have to be it has to be an algae and it can do photosynthesis so this green color is due to the chlorophyll this is called the chlamydomonas and that is an algae so when you see this shape like a pear kind of shape with these hair like structures there that is a and it's green in color that is a chlamydomonas and it is a type of algae then we have this next microorganism here you can see these black color bodies and fiber like structures white is or grayish color fiber and the black color body and this is called muca this is also a type of fungus 
we will see in a little while when we do an activity where this muca grows or even by looking at the figure you might have already understood or remember where you have seen this before so this is called muca this is also a fungus then we have this i told you all about the irregular shaped cell this is an amoeba amoeba it has an irregular shape like this then we have this particular microorganism that is called the paramecium paramecium now look at the shape of this paramecium it looks like a slipper shape this is normally called as a slipper shaped cell paramecium so both these amoeba and paramecium what did i say they are they are protozoans so both of them are protozoans so now can you see all the different types of microorganisms we have a bacteria two types of fungus one algae and there are two protozoans what is missing here what is it a virus i will tell you why now we are going to observe all these in the lab and in the lab we have a light microscope all these organisms are visible through compound light microscope but you can't see a virus through a compound light microscope or any light microscope to observe a virus we need to use an electron microscope that has a different way of magnifying the microorganism so that you can see it clearly so now that you have an idea now here you can see that is autotrophic synthesizes their own food these are all heterotrophic and you can see they have different shapes so you can understand the biological diversity with that understanding now we will look at the permanent slides of all these organisms there in the lab so now we are going to observe some permanent slides that are available in the lab to observe microorganisms so here i have the permanent slide of a paramecium this is how you have the permanent slide so we can use this this has been already prepared for us we can use this to observe the different microorganisms so here we don't have to do anything we just need to place a slide on the microscope so whatever the slide that was there i will remove it now i will place the slide on the stage this is a permanent slide then we have to make sure that it is in low power and also that enough light is falling on it after that have to make sure the specimen is light in in line with the light and then we just need to observe it now here you can observe paramecium can you all see that shape a slipper shaped unicellular organism so it's a microorganism that has a slipper shape so you can clearly see the shape there but here we can observe it under medium power as well to get a better observation so i will change it to medium power now if i do an adjustment you can see it a little bit more clearly you can see the shape of the cells more clearly there again you can see the slipper shaped cell more clearly can you see it students yes that's very clearly visible to you uh, so now i have a amoeba 
microorganism, a permanent slide of amoeba. So again, I will place it under low power. We can observe it here. Can you see the shape? It has kind of an irregular shape because it has the pseudopodia, it has an irregular shape. You can see it clearly. Now I will put it for medium power. Then you will be able to observe it more clearly. Now can you see the irregular shape of amoeba? Yes. So that again is a unicellular organism. Okay, now we will change the slide and I will show you all another microorganism that is muca. We have already observed that before. So here again it has to be under low power. Can you all see the shape students? You can see like a circular shape and thin thread like structures that is the muca. So this is different from the other organisms that you saw. This is a slightly different type of microorganism that you can see. Again this can be observed through medium power. So if I change it to medium power, can you see it clearly now? Still you can differentiate it from the other types of microorganisms. So that is muca, a fungus. So then again, I will use another slide to observe chlamydomonas. So here this is a permanent slide of chlamydomonas. If I adjust it, can you all see the shape, the unicellular organism like a pear-shaped cell that is chlamydomonas. You can see it clearly. Now if I observe it under medium power, again you can see it a little bit more clearly. The shape of the cell is more clear to you now. This is Chlamydomonas. Then after Chlamydomonas, what we observed in coconut water, the yeast cell. So that also can be observed using a permanent slide. You know how the yeast cells should look like? Circle shaped cells, those are again unicellular organisms. You can see that, observe that clearly. So again, this also can be observed under medium power. So if I set it and adjust it, you can see the shape of the cells, the unicellular organism even more clearly now. Can you all see it students? Yes. So now we have observed many different types of unicellular organisms. There is one more, the bacteria. So here again I have the permanent slide of a bacteria that also can be observed under low power. So here if we look at it under low power, can you all see the shape of the cells? This is again different from all the other unicellular organisms that we observe. You can see the bacteria cells clearly. If I put it to medium power again, you will be able to observe it even more clearly. Okay students, so we observed different permanent slides and you saw they were all microorganisms. So they were unicellular organism except for the fungus that had a different structure but you were able to identify the different types of microorganisms. So students, you were able to observe all these microorganisms. You saw how a bacteria looks like, an yeast, chlamydomonas, muca, amoeba, paramecium. Now I told you all, we can't see the viruses. Now we will discuss why. 
Now this is for your extra knowledge. Viruses show living features as well as non-living features. So this is a problem. They show living features and non-living features. So scientists have observed that they are sometimes like non-living things and sometimes they are like living organisms. When they live inside an organism, when they cause diseases, they are like living organisms. So they show living and non-living features. But they are discussed under microorganisms. Why? Because they are very, very tiny. They are not visible to the naked eye and they are not also visible to the through the light microscope. Although viruses are discussed under microorganisms, there is no conclusion yet as to whether they are living or non-living. So here there is no conclusion yet as to whether they are living or non-living. As I told you, because they show the different properties or different characteristics or features. These viruses can be observed through electron microscope. So we discuss two types of microscopes first. Light microscope, under light microscope. Now the light microscope. Under this I told you all there is the simple and this you already know and the compound light microscopes and what we just used in the lab was a compound light microscope and the other type I told you is the electron microscope. So we have the other type. Now the magnifying ability of electron microscope is higher. That is why we are able to see the virus through electron microscope. But that is not visible through these light microscopes. So here if you look at this figure, this is a virus. So you can see that is somewhat different from all the other organisms, the microorganisms we saw before. So still they are not sure, the scientists haven't decided whether they are living or non-living. But still we discuss them under microorganisms. Why? Because of their minute size and they are only visible through electron microscope. So I am sure now you know what viruses are. So, so far we have discussed, I have introduced five different types of microorganisms. Can you recall all of them? Bacteria, fungus, algae, protozoan and virus. Now we will move on to a next part where we see how microorganisms have an effect on food. To understand that, if we look at the scientist who observed microorganisms, the Dutch scientist Antony van Leeuwenhoek observed microorganisms for the very first time in 1674, very long time ago. So he was a Dutch scientist, Antony van Leeuwenhoek. So he was the one to observe microorganisms for the first time in 1674 using a simple microscope that he invented. Here they mean simple because the microscope he made had a very simple structure but he was able to observe the microorganisms. Exploration of microorganisms was possible with further developments in microscopy. So when microscopy developed that is what I told you 
the simple microscope hand lens then the compound microscope now what we use as compound microscopes are very advanced and the development of electron microscope scientists were able to do a lot of research on microorganisms but he is the scientist Anthony van Leeuwenhoek he is the person who observed microorganisms for the first time so you have to remember his name when it comes to microorganisms